What's going on, people? It's me again. Um, have you got one of these? Um, I'd say likely if you're on this video, otherwise why the heck are you here? Um, this is called Nano Control 2. This fantastic piece of equipment I managed to get for under £50. I actually think it was under £40. I think I paid £36 for this from Amazon. Brand new out of the box. Comes loaded with plugins, everything. I'm not going to sell it. This is not a review. This is a user guide, okay? Because I had this beautiful piece of equipment probably because I spent so little on it, sitting on my desk for about six weeks, unused. What a waste of time, what a waste of money. And it's fantastic because I've got it all mapped and working now, watch a few tutorials, figure some stuff out for myself. But I want to share it with you. This will be particularly useful if you're a pre Sonus Studio One user, but it might have some application even if you've just got the cork because I do delve a little bit into the driver software that they provide with it, which actually you need to get some elements of this thing working. Okay, so if it's going to be useful to you, call Nano Control 2. I dive in, hope it's useful. Thank you, and check it out. So, by default, out of the box, you press the buttons and they'll flash on and flash off. Okay? Now, you can't change that within your door. You have to change that in the software that's provided with the driver. So, you'll see here, if I click on one of these buttons, you see here where it says toggle. Okay? You, um, well, actually, when you click on it originally, it will say momentary. So if you look at this, this is the, let's go for this one. This is the, the fourth one along. Okay, is this one over here, the solo button at the top has a momentary action. So if I just select that button and change it from momentary to toggle, okay, and I'll do that actually for all the buttons in that row. Toggle, toggle. So these are the three buttons. That's the solo, mute and record button there. I've changed them all from momentary to toggle. So at the moment they're on momentary, as you can see. I've changed it to toggle, just go to communication at the top and write scene data. So communication, write scene data. I'm just feeling the screen because it's just a little quick one. And then just, um, it'll say this operation will rewrite data on the nano control. Just click okay, boom. Now when I go back, those four buttons, there we go. I can constant them on and constant them off so that's what you need to do so if you want that action where it's not just flipping the button on and off but it's actually remaining on when it's pressed that's the setting you need to change so my advice would be configure your nano control in here first of all just the buttons really that's the main thing so the buttons that you want to be sustain buttons and the buttons that you want to be toggle buttons you can set that here um so any buttons you want to act like that behave in that manner do that here, first of all, and then go into your door and follow the instructions um, to have it set up and working with your digital audio workstation. Hey, so I'm going to do a really quick video um, to demonstrate how to map um, your Korg Nano Control um, into PreSonus Studio One. Um, it, it's probably going to be applicable across a couple of different doors, but the one that I use is PreSony Studio One. And as you can see, I've just got um, this plugin from the BBC, BBC Symphonic Orchestra. It's a free plugin. It's it's fantastic. It's just amazing. But I'm not going to go into that just now. Let me get to mapping this. So I'm going to show you very quickly. So at the moment, I've got my controller set up now. So if I Press play, it plays. You can see there, if I press stop, it stops. Press record, it records. I've also got it set up to jump to different markers using there. I can set my loop in points and out points. So if I just bring my mouse over here, boop, and just click here, that'll set my loop out point, and I can toggle my loop on and off using the cycle button. Um, wicked, so happy about that. But like I said, it took me a long time to get it working. It's actually really easy and really quick. Your control device. The first thing you need to do is you need to add this um, to PreSonus, okay? And that's actually done very easy. If you just go to Studio One and then go to Options up here, and let me just pull that in, so put it on my other screen. Okay, so you can see your options that appear here. You need to go to External Devices. Now, as you can see, mine was already set up. Um, 
and I'm going to, for the sake of this tutorial, um, I'm going to set up a new one. Um, I think I can just duplicate the one that I've got. Um, so I'm going to go to add. Okay. And when you say add, you, this should come up and I'm going to <coughs> select Korg. And there you go, landing control two is there. Um, I'm not sure if I set this up myself actually, because I've got a cord, cord keyboard. Um, oh no, it's there, there you go. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. So nano control two is there, and you want it to receive from your nano control two, and you want it to, yeah, fine. And you want it to send to your nano control two. I'm just getting warnings because I've already got it set up, um, but I'm just doing it to show you, okay? And then once you do that, you click OK, and then I'm pressing to cancel, and then this should appear here. So it'll show Korg, nano control, nano control two, nano control two. Boom. And so you've got that first part, that's part A of getting it all mapped in. The next thing you do after you've got the device set up is you need to, one moment, close it down. You need to go to control up here and then you need to click on this little arrow over here and select nano control. You can see I've got my X5D, which is my keyboard here set up as well. I've got to click on nano control. Okay, I'm just gonna pull in there so you can see this is where the nano, now this initially when you open it up will be blank and I'm going to give an example of how you actually propagate this with um, data from your actually control, actual control device. So I'm just going to remove a few of these but let's right click it up. You've got to click on MIDI learn. MIDI learn essentially is your, puts you into edit mode. Okay, at the moment you're just kind of in view mode, right? What you want to be in doing is edit mode. So if you click on click ed, MIDI learn, and you should right click. I'm just going to remove some of these just to show I can show you what happens. So I'm removing some of these bits and bobs. Okay, now what you need to do at this stage is you need to interact with all of your knobs and buttons. Oh, there you go. So one disappeared, okay, which wasn't there. All right. And what will happen is the ones that are on the screen, you won't have any, but these, you see that one disappeared, that one appeared, that one appeared. So as you press them, they'll appear, okay? So that's going to be kind of like your doors, or sorry, presonuses way of saying, hey, I, 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 I acknowledge the existence of this button, okay? Twist all your knobs, everything. So make sure every single one has been pressed or twisted. Once you've done that, you'll have a map of your buttons. Little quick tip, before you go mad pressing the buttons, the order affects the order that they appear in. And from what I can see, there doesn't seem to be any way of then changing the order. You're kind of stuck with the order that you've pressed them in. So I would say have some rhyme and reason about the way that you press them. It just might make it a little bit more simple in the future when you start mapping these um, um, buttons and controllers um, to perform different tasks if they're in the correct order. So that's a little bit of a future um, warning that I can give you, so to speak. So after you've done that, the next thing you need to do is you need to tell the interface what kind of um, button or controller it is. So if I press on this one, for instance, this is a slider. As you can see, it moves up and down. I've assigned it as a slider, okay? This one, which is also a slider, currently is a knob, okay? Now, I can simply go to Control 85, right click, and I can change it from a knob to a fader, okay? So now, which one was it? Yeah, there you go, sorry, this one. Now, this one, you can see the fader is moving with my fader up and down, okay? And I could do that with these ones as well, so look, Control 25 also, and that's a fader, so I can just right click, boom, fader, it's now fader. This one, Control 27, I can right click, boom, fader, it's now fader. That's all of your buttons, and they're ready to be assigned now to different tasks. So once you have clicked your button, you can then assign it a control, okay? So let's say, and we know this one should be doing soloing, okay? But let's start with a simpler one. Let's start with um, something on my transport. So let's say I want this button to control click, so to toggle click, click on and on, on and off. So if we press play, you can hear the clicking and stop, okay? 
I want this button here to um, control 11 to control click. Okay, so I can just simply right click, assign command, and then I get this little command thing pop up. And I can just type in, if I know the name of the command click, there it is. So we've got song, render click, transport click. I think it's transport click I want. That's gonna give me the toggle click option. So I'll click on that, press okay. So now if I press that button, you should see over here in the bottom, over here, my click is going on and off and on and on. And I'm now controlling that with the pressing of this button. Yahoo! Okay. Fantastic. Um, and I can do that with a number of buttons. Your obvious ones will be to assign your um, transport controls, your stop, because they're already here. I've done it already, so I've got stop, assigned, play, assigned, record, assigned. Um, I'm jumping between markers, assigned. I can um, set my loop points. Um, so if I just put the button over here, and so click the mouse over here, I can set my out loop point over there, my, and then I can press the cycle button, which controls looping, okay? That's just how I've got mine set up. How you set yours up is totally up to you. But that, in essence, is how you set up your control device, um, your Nano Control 2 to control your door. I'm going to do another video, um, probably not on this one, where I explain how you can then use your Nano Control device to control your mixers and um, plugins, which is a little bit more advanced, so I didn't want to put that on this video, but that should get you, that should be enough to get you set up initially on your journey to getting your Korg Nano Control working with PreSonus Studio One. Okay, people, um, I hope you found that video helpful. It was a real relief this morning to wake up and to be able to look at a few tutorials and get it set up, and I thought straight away, well, pay it forward. And I didn't see a specific tutorial about getting to work with PreSonus Studio One. Figured that out for myself, so I've shared it with you guys. And I hope that you found it a useful tutorial, those PreSonus Studio One users. Um, like I said, I'm gonna do some full art videos, probably today as well. They're gonna be a little bit more in depth about how to then connect that up and get it working with your mixers and working with certain plugins, um, particularly for orchestration, um, which I like to use, which is what I actually bought it for. I bought it so I could both work the expression and the dynamics um, whilst I'm playing in. So yeah, those videos are on the way. Please do subscribe. I am going to be putting out lots more videos um, with useful um, tips and hints, but also I always try and put out a bit of how I create my compositions and you can see how I create music. Um, if you're into music, if you're into production, um, try and do at least a couple of videos a week. And um, please like, subscribe. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. I've got a tiny channel, as you can see, but it's growing well. Um, and I'd love to hear back from you, some feedback and some responses, if this has been useful to you or if there's anything else you'd like me to cover. Peace.